Today on What It's Like, 1954 Hudson Superjet. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. This channel, we cover the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that tend to get lost to time. We dive in deep with specs, period correct ads, take the tour, button switches and knobs, and most importantly, we show what these cars are like. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. We are down at Old Spokes Auto Museum in Coonstown, Pennsylvania, the world's largest Hudson Museum. Very cool place. If you're ever in the area, be sure to check this hidden gem out. I believe it's by appointment only, so I will link all of the information in the description below. Hudson was founded in 1909 and remained independent until May 1st of 1954 when they merged with Nash to form one of the most underrated, overlooked companies to ever exist. American Motors Corporation, or AMC for short. But let's go back to 1953. Hudson decided to go for something totally out of the box, a compact aimed directly at the Nash Rambler. Hudson would spend $12 million on development of this, and it was almost like a mating call to Nash. Hey, Nash. Hey, come over here. You look, you see what I got here? If we shack up together, we could be hash. For Hudson to make a compact car was so far out in left field, so far from the normal, it was ultimately looked as a failure because it only lasted two years. And when Nash took over Hudson and formed AMC, the jet was dropped in 1955. 1954 Hudson model lineup. These aren't in any particular order. Wasp, Super Wasp, Hornet, Italia, and then there was the jet. Hudson offered the jet from 1953 to 1954. The jet was built by coach builder Murray. It was the first time Hudson contracted an outside supplier like a coach builder since the 30s. It's also important to note that the jet does not have the step down design shared with all the senior Hudsons. The Hudson Jet could be had in three different trim levels and or tiers. Jet was the base model, followed by Super Jet was in the center. Jet Liner was at the top. The Hudson Jet could be had as a two-door Hollywood hardtop, two-door sedan, and four-door sedan. It's worth mentioning that they did build one convertible. Because this car was built to compete with the Nash Rambler, the Hudson Jet was only produced in two years with the same body design. So let's compare these two. Nash Rambler on the top, Hudson Jet on the bottom, starting in the front. The Rambler, even though it was the pioneer of the compact car segment, is longer at 186.3 inches long versus the Jet at 180.7 inches long. The Hudson looks like it came from a totally different country. These are two totally different designs, and the Hudson has lines and creases everywhere, whereas the Rambler is just smooth, which could be seen better on the side profile. Just look at how different these are. You can't get any different than these two. If you were in the market for a compact four-door car back in the day, these are the two that you would probably look at, and you might throw the Ford in there as well because the Ford during this time period wasn't all that big either. Look at the roof line on the Nash. The Hudson has bigger wheel wells. Looking at the rear, the Rambler has a Continental kit. And just look at where the deck lid line is opposed to where the deck lid line is on the jet. Moving to the dash region, the Rambler is very interesting to say the least. Everything is pushed to the center, whereas the jet is more traditional and pretty basic. If you were buying these cars, which one would you buy in the comment section below? Let's talk specs. 180.7 inches long, 67 inches wide, 62.8 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 105 inches. It weighs 2,650 pounds. Price $1,954, which is equivalent to you spending $29,852.84 in the year 2023. That is equivalent to buying a brand new 2023 Toyota Corolla today. Total, this is the total run of Hudson Jets was 35,367 units produced. 
Moving on to engine, only one engine on offer, 202 cubic inch displacement, inline six, 3.3 liters. It's good for 104 brake horsepower, 4,000 RPM, 158 pound-feet of torque at 1,400 RPM. Compression, seven and a half to one, four main bearings. The block is made out of a chrome alloy, has solid lifters. When mated to a three-speed manual transmission, zero to 60 could be had in 14.6 seconds. Theoretical top speed, 82 miles per hour. Average fuel consumption, 15 miles to the gallon. Three transmissions on offer, three-speed manual, three-speed manual with overdrive, four-speed automatic hydromatic. All right, let's talk styling. Check out the front end design. Doesn't that look so cool? Turn signals here. I love the headlight bezels. And this looks like a hood scoop, but it's not. Let's look at all the lines that are going on. There's a bit of a valley here that goes up. It runs down the length of the car. It's very smooth. There isn't any lines in the hood aside from these lines here. It's got the cow hood vent, which is my favorite feature that they don't put on cars anymore. Notice the windshield. It's, it's wrapped, but it doesn't wrap clear around. It stops right here. Look at all the bright work going up the A-pillar, the drip rails. There's a lot of chrome on this car, a lot of bright work. All the doors are and in chrome coming back to the front check out this line here and it goes clear out the back notice the wheel wells are slightly flared outward so look at that flare i love the center line got a wraparound back glass as well as nice chrome here on the pillar can anybody tell me in the comments section is there another car that you're thinking of that has the same rear end design as this one it's not a hundred it's it's not exactly the same but it's very reminiscent of fill in the blank in the comment section below. Look at all this trim work here. Backup lights. Gas door. So just take a gander at this door panel on all the different materials going on. Look at how this armrest comes out. Very Chrysler-esque. Door handle. Window crank for the big window vent windows take a look at this interior for a compact car there sure is or seems to be a lot of room in there and check out the back seat how much space you have for your feet on to the button switches and knobs starting on the left and moving right i apologize these shots aren't up to my standards but i couldn't get in this car which was a total bummer Oil pressure, which is in the form of an idiot light. Gasoline gauge, weather eye climate controls just below. Speedometer, odometer inside of it. Coolant temperature, amp meter, which is also an idiot light. Overdrive pullout is just at the bottom of the steering wheel. Headlights, ignition, wipers with the windshield washer feature in the center. Lighter, radio, ashtray. So just take a quick gander at this engine compartment. Single carburetor there. That glass jar is for the windshield washer fluid to go into. Flathead 6, 202 cubic inch displacement. Notice the oil filter on the side of the block there. On the positive side, good quality, decent performance, excellent roadability. Against it, dull, barren interior, rust prone. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather, steak or chicken, paper or plastic. Two scenarios today. In the first scenario, 
1953 Kaiser Henry J, or 1954 Hudson Jet, or 1954 Nash Rambler. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Moving on to the second scenario, completely random. 1957 Studebaker Golden Hawk, or 1957 Dual Gear, or 1957 Rambler Rebel. All right, moving on to name that tune. First person to give me both the correct name of the band and song title in the comment section is the key word correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. That is honestly the easiest way to get in touch with me is find me on Facebook, shoot me a message on there. If you don't have Facebook, Shoot me an email. All of that information will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, we generally have scenes for our next episode. I'm not sure if we're going to do a discussion episode or if we're going to actually do an episode or when the next episode is going to be. It will either be tomorrow or it might be Sunday. Until then, toodaloo!